today on Divorce Court. For 10 years, today's couple were best friends and could tell each other anything and everything until they decided to get married. Now these newlyweds are struggling with a communication breakdown that could end their marriage and their friendship. They want me to help them save both. Divorce Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Janelle Burris and Cecily Burris. The two of you have been friends for 10 years, married uh, together as a couple for one year, and married two months. You're already in a little bit of trouble, so you came to see me. Mrs. and Mrs. Burris, I'm gonna call you Janelle and Cecily so I can tell, you know, so we don't get confused, yes, okay? Janelle, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me how you got together and a little bit about this union? Um, me and Cecily met 10 years ago through a mutual friend. We were best friends, you know? We went to clubs together, our kids hung out together, girls' night, you name it, we did it. A year ago, we were both having trouble in our relationships, and I was at the end of my relationship, and I made a joke like, I'm done with guys, I'm gonna get me a girlfriend. At the time, she was living with me, and she was, like, in the kitchen. She's like, well, what am I, you know? What do you think? You saying you're gonna get a girlfriend? I'm right here. And I just laughed it off, you know? And eventually, we both were single. One day, we were laying in bed together. One thing led to another, and we were intimate, and from then, we've been We You just can't separate us. Like, we're always together. We do everything together, literally. Cecily, is that accurate? Is pretty much how it went? That's exactly how it went. <laughs> Had either one of you ever been interested in women before? Yes, I have. I would I... say sexually, but not yeah. emotionally. Exactly. Really? Yes. So, what's the problem now? Now we're finding that, because of the friendship, it was, we were already close and everything, and now we're finding that now that we're married and we're, you know, we blended our lives together, there's things that we have to, for example, her attitude. It's gonna hold us back not just as a couple, but in life too. But more so as a couple, we could be having the time of our lives and she'll catch, find something to have an attitude about. Right. For example... Before we, we get into this, though, Okay. I would like to talk to you about the beginning of your relationship. Okay. I was surprised by your answer that you were interested in women sexually but not emotionally, but I understood that in order to allow the sexual relationship to blossom, you had to incorporate a guy in it. Exactly. Can you explain that to me? I don't know why that was our logic. <laughs> I don't, I don't, maybe because we, neither one of us had been with a woman previously. Right. So in our heads, we were used to men, you know, we were comfortable around them and everything. So in our heads, it was like, they interested, we got male friends. You know, let's... Oh, I bet you had volunteers out the door. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were a hot commodity. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Was it an ongoing thing or was it just so, an introductory... It lasted about four months. Oh. Yes, it did. And um, I'm not saying we were just at it every week or anything like that, going crazy. <laughs> crazy, but, but... It was a course of four months that, the, that this would happen. Um, so the last time it happened, it was her idea, and this was somebody that we friends owned. Uh -huh. And then this night, we went out drinking. We had a good time. She's like, come on. Tonight's the night, you yeah. know? So, you know, we doing our thing. We're intimates, the three of us. And out of nowhere, she gets up and walk out the room. So I'm thinking to my head, she had to use the bathroom. She'll be back. One minute goes by, and the third party walks into the bathroom. So I'm like, she's not in there. I go looking for her. I find her in our daughter's room, in their bed, with the cover <laughs> over her head, in a fetal position. What so, happened? In my defense, I was inebriated, so I feel like that played a part in it. But um, during the process of the encounter we had, I got forgot about. I wasn't oh. there. Oh. I looked over and they were just having a good old time, and I took and you my. You weren't involved. No, I was not. And I kind of like moved over a little bit, and I was like waiting for them to like, miss me to mm, notice that right. I'm not there. And no one noticed. So that just made me mad, and I just got up and walked out the room, and I'm just like, oh, okay. Now, Janelle, looking back, did you ignore her during this particular session? No, ma'am, I addressed yes. her during this session. What do you mean, address? Well... I said, I'm going to... I, I got, going I, ahead, I, I got you. I, I, I don't know, you know, if I was... I got you. I said, <laughs> Is that, are you getting what you need? 
And I said, <laughs> no, and this she's is boring. We need to wrap this up. And they kept on going. And no. did you say that? Did she say that? This yes. is boring. Let's wrap it up. Yes. So that's did you we, wrap it up? That's what we were doing, wrapping it up. I wanted it wrapped up right then and there. I wanted it. It took wrap. you a little longer than you thought, it. though. Yes. It, I, I, it's, it's, I can't control that. Yeah, I, I got it, part. I got it, I got it. So what, ha what happened after you found her? Was there an explosion? Explosion? So I said, what's wrong with you? Like, what's going on? Nothing. Leave me alone. And this is the reaction that I'm used to getting. But I was frustrated. I was mad. I went back in my room. I slammed my door. I started slamming dressers. I was snatching the drawers out and throwing them against the wall. She tore our room up. I even bought pictures of these holes in our bedroom. If uh, you that, that she did on the night of. Yes. Let, let's let's see what happened on the night of. Goodness gracious. I'm strong. I can see that. That one on the right is actually a whole nother story. Like my peripheral caught something. I looked over and it's like green stuff on the wall. And I'm like. What happened right here? She was like, I threw a bowl of green beans. <laughs> and I'm like, why? She was like, because I was mad. Now, is this how you conduct business typically? No, ma'am. I'm usually a very level-headed person. I'm usually like, I don't let Unless people get Unless she gets mad. Me. But if I but get... She got annoyed for reasons that you understood. Well, in that and moment, I she... didn't know nothing. In that moment, I did not know what I was thought going. she said something. Well, yeah, she said, but if you just... Later on, I, I told her, I said, if you would have been like, he got to go, I wouldn't be like, you heard her, you got to go. But it was more so like, I felt like she was attacking me, where we're a team. You know, you tell me what you need, and I'm going to give it to you. But saying, let's wrap this up isn't clear enough. To me, it wasn't clear enough. Let's that moment, wrap this up. I feel like they, were, you? they were in the moment, so they did probably she probably didn't process what I said, which made me mad because I'm like I I felt like I expressed it already. Does she respond with violence, not against you, but to the furniture at large? Is that how she conducts herself? Um, or was this a unique event? Um, it was a little more extreme, but that is that if she's mad enough to the point because it takes a lot to get her mad. Mm -hmm. So when she does get mad, it's, it's all bets off. It's, it's explosion. It, it, it's the World War II. Something's getting broke. I want to wrap up the issue <laughs> of, of, the, of sex because I understand that once you eased men out of the equation, difficulties with respect to your sex, sex life remained. And I want to talk about the nature of those difficulties and why you both think you're having them. When it comes to sex, I'm more dominant. You're married, so you know the difference in kisses. Mm -hmm. You kiss somebody goodnight, it's like, we kiss goodnight, it's time for bed. Right. But if I'm kissing you and then I grab a booty cheek or something, <laughs> you know what time it is. Mm -hmm. She don't know what time it is. So as I was saying, I understand that once the male portion got out of the relationship, your, your sexual difficulties remained. Yes. Uh, Janelle, why don't you tell me what, what are they? It's, um, our sex life is non-existent. We got oh, married June... Oh, non-existent. We got married June 24th, and I can count on one hand how many times we've had sex since then. What do you think the problem is? When it comes to sex, I'm more dominant. I can, you know, make the first move. I've tried to make the first move. You know, you're married, so you know the difference in kisses. Mm -hmm. You kiss somebody goodnight, it's like, we kiss goodnight, it's time for bed. Right. But if I'm kissing you and then I grab a booty cheek or something, <laughs> you know what time it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she don't know what time it is? No. Do you not know what time it is, Cicely? She doesn't make the first move as often as she's trying to say she does. Is it hard for you to it's, make the first it move? It is. It's very hard. And I, don't, and I don't understand it because she was my best friend. And she still is my best friend. But when it gets to that, it's like she's not my best friend anymore. It's like it's a stranger, and I got to build up the confidence, and I got to... And I don't know why that is, but... Now, let me ask you a question. Yes. I understand the hesitancy. If you're not in the habit of initiating. But what I want to know is, even though you don't initiate, do you want, but simply don't express? I definitely feel like I want it way more than I express it. I don't think I want it as much as she does, 
but I want it way more than I express. And I'm just, I overthink a lot. I'm thinking that she's gonna turn me down, even though she never has. She'll say things like, I just don't really like sex. And I'm like, well, I'm not about to come and you, you get what I'm saying? I don't. Do you tell her you don't like sex? It really stems back to my childhood, honestly, is what I think. Why? Um, I was molested by a family friend, and oh. I thought I handled that, and it was good. Um, until now. So, I, I, you know, I felt like I was good. I got over it. I moved on in life. Everything was good. And I feel like the reason why it's a problem now is because I've never been intimate on, like, a personal, like, emotional level with any man. It was always just sex. Or me just trying to please them because they were my man. With her, I feel so much more responsibility to satisfy her in way more ways than just physically. So I feel like it's just now it's... I don't know, it's an issue now. I don't know, I just overthink everything. So, sex was introduced to you as an unwanted obligation, and it continued to be an obligation throughout. It was never something that you were allowed to, to warm up to and, and learn to enjoy. It was something that was being done to you. Mm -hmm. You know, the depth of the scarring that occurs when people are molested and how many people have been molested, you know, you should go see somebody because they need to work that out, because that is way wrong. That's nothing you're supposed to figure out on your own. Somebody needs to help you with it, because somebody hurt you with it. And, 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 and I encourage you to do that, because you two love each other, you two want each other, and I don't want whoever that individual was standing in between the, the two of you, not a nary another day. Right. Now that we're done talking about that, I want to talk about parenting, styles, and family difficulties. Probably about a month ago, I woke up and I looked over and our daughter, the youngest one, is in the bed. And I'm like, mm, no wonder I didn't get no sleep last night. Shorty in the bed. What would you do if your sexual appetite was much larger than your partner's? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Janelle, I understand that you two have different points of view on how to parent. Tell me what's going on there. I'm more the fun parent. I'm the mm -hmm. one that's hands-on with the kids. I get them up in the morning, get them off to school, you know, take care of homework and everything, and get them ready for bed. I'm with the kids most of the time. I also understand that there's an issue with little ones sleeping in the bed, yes. one likes it, one doesn't. I'm gonna let Cicely tell me about that. So in the beginning, when I first moved in with her, we were just friends. Um, I was just staying on the couch temporarily until I got my own place. Uh, her daughter slept in the bed with her regularly. It was, it was a normal. Probably about a month ago, I woke up and I looked over and our daughter, the youngest one, is in the bed. And I'm like, mm, no wonder I didn't get no sleep last night. Shorty in the bed. Was it a one-time weird circumstance? Because little, little kids, they get in the bed with you. It's just like, it's like musical beds. You know what I mean? Honor, they do do Honor, that. Honor, we put a our... lock on our door. So they cannot do that. That's the yeah, whole but, point but, of the but, lock. But, 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 but what I'm trying to say is this. Sometimes when they three, two, four, they have a th and they get in the bed. I just don't agree. I didn't raise my daughter like that. My daughter's five, and she never came and got in the bed. I, I let her, I mean, I let it be known from day one. You know, yeah, when you're sick, or, you know, we'll cuddle, watch a movie, but it's bedtime, it's bedtime. And she I'm, have a night, nightmare. What she do? You come, if you want to come in, okay, you're right, baby. Okay, go back to bed now when you're good. Like, or I'll come in there, pat your back till you fall. You're not sleeping in my bed. Like, it's not. Do they have any sense of, well, there's a change in the relationship between mommy and her friend? <laughs> We had a conversation. Did you have a conversation them. about yes. it? Yes, we did. How, how'd that conversation go? Because it must be hard to make that <laughs> age appropriate when they're so young. We basically just told them we love each other and that we're in a relationship. And they, I mean, they were just like, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, that, at that age, <laughs> they don't really care. And, and, yeah. and you know, they, they later had to deal with it in school. You know, mm -hmm. I had two mommies and people asking questions, but they handle it really well. They're very. They, they're good when it comes to that. But I just want to defend myself. Okay. Three nights ago, my baby came into the room. She had her pillow and her blanket. She was ready because she knew my mom was going to say yes. And I turned her right back around and sent her right back in her room. Did, did, did she do that? She definitely did. And I looked over my shoulder and I'm waiting. I see her at the door and I'm like, oh, please say yes. Oh, she was like, go back to bed. I'm like, oh, okay. Bro, back to went to sleep. Slept good that night and it was good. I'm going to tell you about your behavior. Yes. Because you did that wrong. And then I'm gonna tell you about your behavior and what you're doing wrong. Yes, ma'am. And hopefully we can get it right. 
Would you consider pursuing a romantic relationship with your best friend of 10 years? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I think you two are the poster children for the communication issues that I see so frequently in this court. Your problem is you don't put it into words. You get an attitude, you get irritated, you get upset, but you don't speak on it. And once you do that, you're just emanating frustration and anger, and she responds with frustration and anger. If you're, you're a grown woman, she's a grown woman. If something's bothering you, tell her. She doesn't know. She, you don't want her to guess, because if she guess, she might guess wrong. She doesn't understand. Be a grown woman and tell her. Tell her, tell her calmly. Tell her, you know what? I didn't like what you did yesterday at 5 o'clock, and here's why. What do you have to say about that? Don't catch a dude. It, 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 it's counterproductive. It starts a whole nother fight that doesn't address the initial issue to begin with. And when she starts to do something, if she changes a behavior in response to a request, it shouldn't be, yeah, let me check and see if she's doing <laughs> it. It should be, thank you for that, baby. I appreciate it. Because she is realigning her relationship and her pattern with her own daughter, and don't get no tighter than that, right. to please you. So you have to be appreciative. You have to show her, I love you for it. That encourages her to continue to change in your direction as opposed to it being yet another thing that this chick made me change for her that I didn't want to do. No. And nothing wrong is your house that can't be changed by, by, at, by altering your attitude and engaging in conversation, not assuming that the other one knows what's on your mind because you really don't know. And even if you do know, you still need to hear it so you don't have to guess. It's very frustrating dealing with people who will not speak their mind. Very frustrating. And let me tell you about throwing green beans. <laughs> throwing does not encourage the other person to be more, more communicative. It's like, oh, she's got a big temper. I don't, I don't want to poke the bear, so I ain't going to say nothing. She doesn't just say nothing, let it go. She says nothing, and she harbors. And then you got a bigger problem, and then you're mad because you know she's harboring. You don't know what it's about. Next thing you know, there's vegetables on the wall. Mm, right. <laughs> what you need to do is respond calmly. If she's not talking to you, and you see she's got an attitude, Cecily, what's going on? Tell, talk to me about it. Can't fix what I don't know. Can't do it. Yes, ma'am. And keep the vegetables in the refrigerator. Yes, ma'am. All right? <laughs> yes. You need to see somebody about what that one somebody did to you because it's, it, it, it's not something you can work out on your own. It's so out of, it's so out of the box for standard behavior and appropriate behavior, you need to have somebody work that out with you because I don't want it to mess this up because this thing is a beautiful thing. You with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Good luck to the both of you. This matter's adjourned. So there's always a risk, you know, being best friends and then turning that into a relationship. Was that a fear of yours? It really wasn't at first, just because we've been friends for so long. Uh, I would say now more I think about it more just because of the issues we're having. I've been told I need anger management. Oh, so I, I'm, I'm going to seek some anger management. Okay, to cut back on the vegetable throwing. Yeah, I don't want to throw vegetables. <laughs>